everybody. Today we're going to talk about a question that I keep getting over and over now that I've reviewed the Airstrike nailers from Ryobi as well as the rigid hyperdrive nailers. And that's how to keep them working properly, not get gummed up, and really not run into jams. Now if you watch those videos you can see that I did runtime testing where I shot thousands of nails. Jams were no issues at all and that's because of two main reasons. The first is because I'm using high quality nails. And the second is that I keep everything clean and lubricated. So what I want to do in this video is show you exactly how to maintain your air nailers or your cordless nailers so they're going to get their maximum performance. As far as nails go, you're going to find a lot of different brands, a lot of different size packages, as well as a lot of different links when you go to buy these. Now I'm talking at your local hardware store, even at Lowe's or Home Depot, there's going to be many different options. And if you notice, the different packages I have in front of me right now are all Hitachi brand. I bought these locally at my local Lowe's and I've had zero issues out of any that I've used currently or in the past. And the reason I say that, if we take a look at this box of 5,000 1 inch 18 gauge brad nails, I used this box exclusively when I did all the runtime testing, not only for the rigid hyperdrive nailer, but also the Ryobi Airstrike nailer, which were both brad nailers. Now I want to point out, this originally came with 5,000 nails. It only has maybe five or six strips left in the bottom, so we easily shot over 4,000 of them and did not run into one jam. Now the reason for that is the fact that Hitachi puts a very thin coat of glue on these to hold them together. And unlike some of the other brands that I've used that were cheaper and some brands that were more expensive, these do not gum up the mechanism inside that cordless nailer. So if you had some cheaper nails, they may work fine in your air nailer, but you may find that they're going to jam up your Airstrike or your Hyperdrive nailer or even some other brands because of the amount of glue that's on the nails. So next let me show you how to clean up the guns, how to oil them up properly, and then you'll be able to keep them running as smoothly as possible. The two different products that I like to use to clean as well as lubricate the cordless nailers is Passload Cordless Tool Cleaner, which is an aerosol can, and then this small bottle of Passload Lubricating Oil. Now this is going to keep everything lubricated, oiled up correctly, and it's going to prevent the jams. Now the reason that I like these versus some other things like WD-40 or even 3-in-1 oil is the fact that the cordless tool cleaner does not leave any residue and it's not going to hurt any plastic. And then this lubricating oil really does a good job at lubricating and not gumming up the internal parts. Here's the rigid hyperdrive 18 gauge brad nailer that I just did a review on. And during the runtime testing, we shot over 2,500 nails through this with no jams. Now, prior to using it, I actually did clean everything up straight out of the box with the Passload cordless tool cleaner. And then I lubricated the metal parts with that Passload lubricating oil to keep it running smoothly. I have not opened this up since because we didn't have any jams. And the magazine right now has nothing inside of it. Now what we'll do is just flip this tab up and we'll be able to look underneath. You can see there's still a light sheen of oil on here from when I originally put it on. And there's almost no residue from the glue which would be on the Hitachi nails. Now unlike the cheaper nails that I used or like I said even some of the more expensive ones, they did not jam on me at all. And you can see that all of the glue went out the end of the nailer with each nail. It did not gum up the inside and then prevent this from working correctly. And looking at the end of it, really other than just a little bit of dust that's on here that has mixed in with the oil and then I'm sure just a little bit of the glue residue, you really can't even tell this has been used. It looks perfectly clean and if we just took a rag and wiped everything off it would look brand new again. Now to clean the cordless nailer as well as lubricate it, there's a few things you want to do. The first thing is to remove the power source, which in this case is a battery, but let's say this was an air nailer, you're going to want to unplug the air line so you don't accidentally fire it and then hurt yourself. So we'll go ahead and just set that out of the way. The second thing you want to do is clear the magazine. Now, many times these are already empty, but if you pop it open, you can see that this one does have a strip of nails inside. Even though there's no battery, if you just remove the top portion of the magazine, like let's say you wanted to clear a jam, if you did have a strip of nails in here, those would go shooting out of the top. So always open up the magazine and remove the nails before you ever open up the top of this. Now when we look in the magazine, you can see there's a lot of oil residue in here as well as dust, and I'm sure glue residue also from the strips of nails. The first thing we want to do is go ahead and clean all this up. 
Now the way you do that is to take the pass load cordless tool cleaner and we'll just go ahead and spray it in there liberally. Now the good thing about this particular cleaner, if you get any on the plastic, it's not going to damage anything and it also evaporates very quickly. So what we'll do is just go ahead and spray this in here now. And now that it's nice and soaked, we can take just a standard shop towel, wipe everything off, and as it evaporates, it's going to completely leave no residue, but this is also going to pull any dirt and debris as well as any oil completely off of the metal. So now while that's drying, what we can do is pop the top of this open. So I'll just go ahead for the moment, slide the magazine back shut. Now the top of this we need to pop open. This is what you would do if you wanted to remove a jam. You'll take this tab, just flip it up, and the whole top mechanism is going to fold up at this point. Now inside of here is also a residue of the older oil as well as dirt and dust. What we'll do is spray that down with the tool cleaner also and that's going to completely eliminate all that. So taking that same cleaner, we'll just go ahead and soak this down. Now once again, if that gets on any of the plastic, it's not going to hurt anything because it is plastic safe. So we can take our shop rag at this point, wipe off all the old oil residue, glue residue, and then any dust, and it's going to be completely clean. Now at this point, we can take that lubricating oil, put a few drops on here because everything has evaporated at this point, and then just moving it around with our finger, we'll be able to coat everything. So what we'll do is just take the lubricating oil, put maybe a drop on this side, a drop on this side, maybe a little bit down here towards the end, and then on the top striker plate. And what we'll do is just go ahead and take our finger and then just move that around. You'll see the colors change, which will give it a nice sheen. And then it's going to give a real nice coat on here and nothing's going to jam on you. Now, you don't want to just squirt that down in the holes and have way too much oil. You really only want to have a very light coat. So now that that's nice and coated, we can go ahead, press everything back down into place, go ahead and latch the latch. And then the only other place that we have to lubricate is going to be inside the magazine. So once again, we can go ahead and open that up. Inside of here does have a little bit of the cleaner from when we just sprayed it in from the top. So we can take our rag again, just go ahead and wipe that off one more time. And then we'll be taking a little bit of that lubricating oil and doing the exact same thing inside of here. So we'll make a little bead down along this side, maybe a couple little stripes down through here. And then on the bottom plate here that does have the spring tension on it, we'll go ahead and put a little bit on there. So taking our finger, we'll go ahead and move this around. Now we're lubricating the entire inside of the magazine and none of the nails are going to jam in here before they get to the top. So when we move this back and forth, everything slides very smoothly. And now we'll be ready to take our nails, reload them in here. We can then at that point click everything shut, take our battery, put it back into place, and now it's going to be ready to go. Now lastly, let's talk about air nailers. Now these are going to be completely different than cordless nailers, but you do want to keep them clean and lubricated with one additional step. The little fitting on the bottom that you're going to plug into the air hose on many of them does require you to use air tool oil. Now what this is going to do is basically put a drop or two in there depending on your manufacturer's specs. Then you're going to connect your air line and as you fire this, the air pressure along with that oil is going to go all through the internal components of this and lubricate everything the entire time you use it. Now with a battery powered nailer that's not necessary and just the parts I showed you should be lubricated. But when we look at air nailers, if they are required to have air tool oil, that's where you're going to install it. Is in the little plug on the bottom, you're going to take your air tool oil and put one or two drops in there. So there are some of the best tips that I can give you of how to keep your tools running great and get maximum performance out of them. Now that's whether you're using the cordless nailers or the pneumatic nailers. You want to keep them clean and lubricated. And really the main thing other than that is the fact that you want to use high quality nails. Now I really prefer the Hitachi brand. I've had no issues out of them whatsoever and they really do not jam on me. Now if you use a different brand of nailer, you may have problems with that. So it may not be the same across the board, but as far as what I've used, I've had zero issues out of any of the Hitachi nails. And I've easily shot over 10 or 15,000 of them. Now I also want to point out as far as the pass load tool cleaner and lubricating oil goes, they really do an excellent job. I really like that cleaner because it does not stain or melt the plastic. 
And then the lubricating oil does leave a very clear little film on there that doesn't gum up with dust, dirt, and debris, and it's going to keep everything running smoothly. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.